questions um, and a motion for our fiscal year budget. It was uh, approved by City Council, was it the last meeting? A couple, meetings, couple ago. meetings ago. Okay. So I'll make the motion that we approve the submitted 2023-24 20, 20, 20, budget for the next fiscal year. Thank you. Motion by Karen. Second. Support from Bruce. Any discussion, comments? Thank you all. Thanks, City Council. Um, Can you make some comments? Please. Um, we I just want to say that we, uh, this was Carmen and I's first budget cycle, and uh, we, we took an approach to kind of get a lot of engagement from all of you as board members and have some good discussion that started in December, right, and then move forward. Um, so uh, I just uh, want, to, want to thank you. We, we will do that process again as part of the annual cycle and have those discussions again starting early. Um, and uh, but I just want to thank all of you for your engagement and uh, and for acknowledging and use of your authorities. I mean that's uh, the budget process is a is a process that uh, that shows your principles and your your values. And I think you all did a, a great job in, in that discussion. So I just want to say thank you. Thanks, Mark. Um, this is a roll call, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Bruce Allen? Yes. Bill Gamble? Yes. Um, Ty Greedy? Yes. Deanna Marsh? Since I'm late for the ball game, um, we're moving on. This is to approve the fiscal year budget. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Okay. Um, we need a motion to close these, this meeting, public hearing, sorry. Move to close the Thank you, Bruce. Second. Thank you, Karen. Okay. Um, I would ask for approval of the agenda for today's meeting. This doesn't need a voice vote. Oh, we do? I'm sorry. Okay. All in favor to close the public hearing. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Okay. Um, approval of the agenda for today's regular meeting. I guess we have that already. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm off my game today. I guess under old business idea at um, Social District. Okay. Motion to agenda, amend the agenda. Thanks, Bill. Second. Um, motion from Bill, second from Bruce. Anything else? I, if I could just suggest that uh, because we have two guest speakers this morning, uh, Mark and, and Sammy, if they can go uh, first in the uh, agenda so maybe they can after, go after public comments uh, or, uh, excuse me, after, uh, yeah. However you would like to put them. Let's go after the minutes. Okay. Uh, Sammy, CVD, and then uh, Mr. Sandstead. Any other changes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, public comments on the agenda. Thanks for coming. Moving on to approval of minutes um, from last month. There were a couple of things under unification that I was wondering that would be changed. Um, it was stated that Hayes last and I raised the funds. It was just me that raised the funds, and if there were discrepancies or anything, I, I don't want those to be at fault for anything. Okay. And then also, um, the number was 8,275 that we raised. That was in the minutes, but we actually raised 7,950. Okay. The, the rest of that were promised donations that we didn't receive. Okay. Thanks for those corrections. Mark, did you have any amendments? No. Okay. No. 
And then just page five, spoke with, spoke with Carmen, just in, uh, adding to what the district boundaries we talked about last meeting with west to cross street. We'll have some discussion about uh, amending south as well. Today. Okay. So do we have a motion to approve of those amendments? I move that we approve the May 10th minutes with the, with the amendments. Thank you, Karen. Sir. Support from Bruce. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Sammy.
need to talk to the government or go to the county for anything. But it does blend nicely because we do work together with everyone. But a logo means nothing without a mission and our purpose. And when I started and I asked people, what do you think of the CBB and what do you think our mission is? Most people said, well, you hand out brochures and you buy some billboards. Well, that may be true. That's not the only thing that we do. I mean, we're engaged in discussions with economic development. We work closely with the chamber. Um, we talk to our government officials. We're having discussions about short-term rentals. And we don't just deal with hotel properties, although those are our constituents. Some of our most important constituents are the people who live here because the locals set the tone and the culture for what tourists see. But ultimately, our role is marketing, it's education, and it's collaboration. So our job is to market Manistee County to visitors, but also to locals, using technology and data-driven decisions to explore nature and history and community and culture through our region. I bought a house here in 2015. I moved here full-time in 2019. I had no idea about some of the great things there are to do in our county, and even our city. I mean, I run along the river walk, and that's cool, and I hang out at the beaches. I go to the lighthouse, but I had no idea that we had giant sequoia trees here. I had no idea there was Gravity Hill. I had never seen the, expand the um, wooden bridge across North Country Trail until I started working for the CDB, and that's unfortunate. I didn't even know we had a North Beach until I started seeing the um, tower being painted and started exploring some of the things that we have to offer here in this community. And that's unfortunate. So I hope that Manistee Tourism can also be a cheerleader for the people who live here and help educate those folks as well. But I think we have a, a really great opportunity to showcase all the wonderful things that there are to do throughout our entire county. And there are so many things to discover, explore, and experience through the county. Here's a sneak peek at some of our creative um, that's upcoming. And we're exploring new and bigger markets throughout Michigan, but also trying to take a step into Chicago, Indianapolis, and Northwest Ohio, because that's what some of our data is telling us, is an opportunity for growth here. And we'll also get a new website, which I'm really excited about. So the education side of things, we receive lots of data from <clears throat> excuse me, um, state partners like MEDC that show how important tourism is to this community. I'll be back in July to go over 20, uh, 2022 numbers. Um, I presented 2021 numbers a couple of months ago, um, but we do have 2022 numbers coming our way soon, and I think that'll be a better snapshot of where tourism is in our community. Um, the other thing that we do is we work with partners NEAR and AirDNA. And I've, I've shared with some of you what we can do with NEAR. NEAR is our geofence tool where we've geofenced the entire county, but we've also geofenced hotel properties, attractions. Uh, Stacy from the chamber asked if I would go back in time and look at the Budweiser Clydesdale event and who showed up for that. But essentially, we take uh, cell phone data and look at visitor habits. So anytime someone from 50 miles or more come through our community for more than four hours, and if they happen to open up their cell phone, we know about it. And we use this tool to look at where are growth market opportunities? Who can we best serve with an ad? How can we build lookalike audience? Where are some rich uh, properties and areas that we can look at for um, uh, prospecting for visitors to come to Manistee County? And then our partnership with AirDNA helps us to access data regarding short-term rentals. Um, there's an opportunity to look at that, help, help the city, help some of the different communities, Arcadia, Onekama, make some um, decisions on some short-term rentals in their area. <clears throat> and finally, collaboration. We all want the very best for Manistee County, and I'm committed to making sure that the uh, Tourism Authority is a partner with you in that. And there's a saying that people support what they help build. I'm here to help bring some awareness and some data and help build Manistee County into something really amazing or more amazing than it is. Of course, our community, Manistee County is a big place and we recognize that we need to help communities like Bear Lake and Brethren, Wellston, Filer, Onekama, Arcadia, 
all our communities by showcasing the very best that they have to offer as well. Um, so we're going to be taking an enhanced regional approach to tourism so guests know what community they're in when they get there. And one of the ways that we're doing that is my itinerary. So we'll be setting up community kiosks throughout the county to help promote some of the assets throughout the county. In the past, everybody has seen our visitor's guide. We created our visitor's guide and handed that to someone who was 80 or someone who was 30 or someone who just wanted to come here in winter or someone who wanted to just come here in summer. Whether they could bike or hike or fish or they just wanted to come visit and relax, they all got the same material. With my itinerary, they get to choose what material they want. So think Sherwin-Williams paint card. We'll have a series of different itineraries of, of adventures throughout the county and you pick your own adventure and in that comes where like the Big M for example can you hike there can you bike there can you cross-country ski there there's a will be a QR code that leads you back to our website but it also talks about intensity levels so if somebody doesn't have an appropriate bike to do the Big M they'll know about it by choosing the Big M itinerary card it also has the time that you need to spend there. Because some tourists, when they come through, they might have six hours, they might have four days. And we want to be able to make sure that they're building itineraries that are appropriate to the level that they want to experience Manistee County. Our first partnership opportunity will be in this vestibule for West Shore Community College. We'll be building out our first kiosk there over the next couple of months. It's another way that West Shore is being accessible to the community and I'm super excited about it because our office is at 310 First Street. A lot of people, I think, come to the chamber looking for tourism information. Well, now they can get it through this vestibule in one of the key corners of our uh, lovely downtown. And also, um, uh, we'll be uh, still enhancing our county lines. Uh, we have four county line markers uh, throughout the county at 31, 55, there's one on, on 22 as well. We'll be rewrapping those with the branding elements. We also have 250 barricades that many of you are aware of that we loan out on a um, reserve first come basis if you're interested. Um, just call our office. We'll still be doing that as well, but we'll be rewrapping those with our new uh, messaging. So what does the next 12 months look like? Well, we've got a lot of work ahead, and just like Mark and Carmen, I did my first budget this year um, that I'll be sending to our board, and Barry from our board is here. Um, that goes out on Tuesday, but we've got a lot of work ahead of us to implement the new brand. Um, we've got a new digital campaign that launched yesterday. We've got uh, streaming TV campaigns. We've got new photography planned, which I'm really excited about because we haven't had professional photography services for about four years. So to be able to bring in a world-class photographer to shoot all these assets, I'm super excited about. You'll see new community signage. I mean, we're, we're planning on working with the Chamber and the DDA on the STE Social District signage and what other opportunities are there. Um, we've got a campaign for the downtown bridge closure that we're ready to kick off. I mean, we've got to educate our tourists, but also our locals on how to continue coming downtown. Um, we've got an outdoor campaign, we've got trade show assets, we've got a lot of things that we've got to do, including a new vacation guide, which is super stunning and features Chris Frankoviak's artwork on the front. And it's one of the freighters coming through and it is so magnificent that, and the color pops so beautifully that I'm really super excited about it. And of course, building out our itinerary cards. So I'll be back in a couple of months again with some updated tourism data, um, county specific uh, for 2022. But I'm always open to uh, more ideas on how we can better partner with the DDA and all of its businesses. And um, everything that you do, please know, you have an impact on tourism. And whether it's the boxes outside for flowers, whether it's the way you greet your customers, it's the signage that's out front, it's how you deal with people. You are very important for tourism, and in many ways, you're our biggest ambassador. So we appreciate your help in that because you play a huge role in tourism. So thank you for everything that you do. Thank you, Sammy. Thank any, you. any questions for Sammy?
Go ahead. Sammy, can, I mean, and this could also be for Bill too, but uh, can you tell us uh, just briefly when you uh, anticipate the marketing signage billboards to start for the construction detour on US 31? So we're in the midst of printing um, some information right now. Um, one of the big things is tear pads to all the businesses and also, but not just in downtown, outside businesses. So I envision that a hotel guest, for example, might go up to the front desk and say, I'm, I'm going downtown, um, what do I need to know? A lovely tear pad that has the detour back. Uh, the billboards will start going up, I believe, this week and run through October. So we had to secure those rather early without knowing exact construction dates. Now, it's these orange ones right here. It's not pretty, but it's functional. I mean, this is not a branding campaign that you're going to see. This is something, and I, I pulled this one up so you can see the difference. I probably would drive past this thinking it was a promotion for the lighthouse. This one is a little more functional of a, hey, uh, the businesses are still open. We're also working with DPW on additional signage that will actually go up on detour barricades that say downtown businesses open. Um, we had a much bigger plan, MDOT didn't like some of the language that we were using to be very specific because you've got just a few seconds to catch cars driving by. Um, so everything says downtown businesses open. And I'm not going to say there aren't going to be hiccups. We're just trying to minimize what those hiccups are. But we kind of need this repave and the bridge work because that's progress, and that's, I mean, that's needs preservation. So we need to take good care of it. But you should see the tear the tear pads here in the next couple of weeks. Thanks, Sammy, for working with us on that. You're welcome. I, I wanted to also briefly go over our um, advertising campaign um, just to blow everybody's mind as well. <laughs> Um, I love data, and um, I worked for a governor that loved data. I think he was a nerd, but he used to always say, in God we trust, but everything else provide data. And so I love making data-driven decisions on what we do, and we use NEAR, that's the Geofence Group, to place all of our digital um, and also our remarketing campaign. But essentially, some of our targets are Chicago, Detroit, uh, Flint, Fort Wayne, Grand Rapids, Lansing, South Bend, Toledo, and Traverse City and Cadillac. Um, I, I included Traverse City and Cadillac for a couple of reasons. And um, I was sitting in, uh, I went to the Love Ludington Festival over the weekend. I'm sitting at Ludington Bay Brewery, and I hear these two guys talking next to me. And one of them said, have you ever been to Manistee? And the other one's like, yeah, they have so much better restaurants than here. And it's, so much, <laughs> it's such a better place to be, but nobody knows about them. Well, clearly they knew about us. So I'm not sure what they were saying, but I want everybody to know about Manistee County because there really are some great things here. And, and admittedly, I had never heard of Manistee County until I came fishing here once. And I loved it so much that I bought a house here. So, um, but what we're looking at doing is any traveler who has traveled through Manistee County but has not stayed the night. And we can track cell phone data of people who have been to our county but have, and, and uh, play that against hotel data of anyone who has stayed for longer than 24 hours. And we can serve them an ad. So if anybody has gone through Manistee but stayed in Cadillac, Frankfurt, Leelanau, Ludington, or Traverse City, they'll be served an ad about Manistee and all the great hotels and all the neat attractions that we have to offer here. In addition, we're looking at campaign-based um, activities like outdoor recreation enthusiasts and beachgoers and golfers, because we have all that here. And if anybody's had any kind of credit card transaction at any of those types of business, we'll also serve them an ad. So, you know, when you open up your cell phone and you see ads on things that you may have searched and you get an ad served later, that's us. We're doing stuff like that. And all that's done here in Manistee County. We're also looking at a mini uh, test campaign for the marina to be able to make sure that when guests come here, are they staying in hotels and going to our restaurants? But we can geofence the marina, which we've done, and now we're looking at traffic that goes through the marina. So we can see if they are staying here, and then in addition, if they've come back, so if we're driving a future stay. 
We're also doing a lot of that on social as well and in, in all the same markets because a digital campaign means nothing without all the social and all the other assets to back it up. And then this is just kind of a look at what some of our creative looks like. We have segments that go to people of the interest that they have. So if someone's a golfer and they like to go to the beach, they're probably not going to get served a bike ad. I mean, we've got to know that they like to ride bikes before they'll get a bike ad. So um, I'm really excited about this. I mean, this is, this is big time, big level stuff. And we're a relatively small tourism authority, and we're doing some really exciting things. So um, I appreciate the support that I get from the DDA and from all of you in your other roles. So um, thank you for the opportunity today. Sandy, great presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate you working so closely with the DDA as well. It's my pleasure. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Sandstone. All right. <laughs> well, thank you all. Um, I think I know most of you. I'm Mark Sandstead, and I represent Eagle 1015 Radio. And we got to thinking about the detour and just how disruptive it's going to be. And would there be a way that we could partner with the DDA and local businesses to help um, navigate the detour as we get into through October. And as we get this on the street, if we have the DDA kind of co-sponsoring it, I think it makes it a little, it's, it's a partnership, but it also makes it easier for the businesses to buy in. Um, so the gist would be, and I did, I have a spec commercial that I brought to play so you can kind of um, understand how this would all come together. Um, the gist would have there would be an opening. Um, again, we could create whatever message we want for the DDA, whether it's welcome to town, we're still open, there's plenty of parking, great places to live. In the middle, there would be three individual businesses with an individual message, and then there would be a closing message, again, that could be adjusted. We could have multiple messages running. And we did this through resurrecting an old jingle that we did many years ago for the DDA, and it's still, I think, relevant, and it says, so much, so close. Downtown Manistee, I don't know if you guys remember when we did that, it was probably 12, 15 years ago. So I thought what I would do is just play that for you and then if you have any questions we can we can go from there and Shop, dine, and play in downtown Manistee. The Outpost has the brands that fit your lifestyle, including Patagonia, Cool, The North Face, and Tribal. Stop in and grab a coffee or tea from the full-service coffee bar at The Outpost, celebrating 24 years in downtown Manistee. Spice up your cooking routine with great recipes from Northern Spice Company. From bulk spices to custom blended seasonings, Northern Spice Company has something for every taste bud. Surroundings is the place for cigar lovers. Check out the huge walk-in humidor. Relax and enjoy your choice in our comfortable smoking lounge. Surroundings open daily 10 to 7, close Sunday. Free parking, friendly merchants, and great dining options. Make Manistee the place to be. The Manistee Downtown Development Authority invites you to experience downtown Manistee today. So then, once we knew what our pool was, the radio station will match 100% whatever the DDA and the merchants put in. So if we've got $2,500, we'll deliver a $5,000 campaign. If we've got $4,000, we would deliver an $8,000 campaign. So by virtue of the DDA's involvement, we are extending our nonprofit discount to that. So um, the gist of it is... Shop, dine, and play. Sorry, right? <laughs> um, the gist of it is that over the course of the four months that, you know, it would get a lot of play. Um, also included is a representative from the DDA or a participating merchant to come in and be on with Scotty Mack once a month too, just to kind of give updates. That would enhance the, the other interviews that we already do on a, on a regular basis. So it's really, it's really designed to locals, but recognizing that every week we're turning over a lot of new people in the community that are tuning in. And um, it just keeps downtown in the top of everyone's mind as we go through the, the detour and maybe a way to help relieve some of the issues that we anticipate. So um, I just appreciate your consideration and you know if there's a way we can work together we'd be happy to do that with you. So Mark, um, so how does this how does this work? Um, are you looking for a commitment from the DDA and then yes. yeah, separate you, commitments from businesses yeah, as well? So once we had your endorsement basically and your commitment then that we would hit the street with it and say 
we are partnering with the DDA on this. Okay. Would you like to join in and at what level? Okay. And then um, once I know what the scope of it is, I can put an actual plan together. Okay. It, whatever we do, we will we will manage. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Any questions for Mark? Okay. And I'll leave my card with you too if anybody has any Great. questions afterwards. So thank you. Thank you so much. For um, sake of discussion, um, what is the um, budget look like for this line item? Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Mark, oh, one question. When would you need a commitment? Um, well, if we want to get going in July, I mean, if we had to wait till your next meeting, I understand. Okay. Because um, I know you have, you know, you just can't make decisions. But, um, yeah, I mean, as soon as, yeah. you know, because the time is kind of ticking and, you know, I, I know your fiscal year and all that. So, really, just as soon as we get to go ahead, then we got to get it on the street and right. we would have to get it. I would anticipate trying to sell it in about a week. Okay. And just let people know that, you know, if, if we want to get involved, we need to sooner the Sooner the better. So, Okay. But excellent. And I just appreciate the opportunity to come in and share with you. So thanks again. Thank thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you. So just the point that the detour is actually starting the 10th. I don't know if it's a, um, as, as opposed to the 17th, MDOT let us know. So our next DDA meeting is the 12th. July 10th it's starting. Good luck getting here. Okay. <laughs> so I think we're going to have it before we should probably do it this meeting. Okay. Thank you, Bill. That was a No pun intended. <laughs> Right, so, thanks, guys. Mark. Thanks, Mark. Go ahead, Carmen. In answer to your question, since um, this would fall on the next fiscal year, do we have a budget line item of $5,000 for okay. any type of uh, advertising and promotion? And do we have anything committed to that right now? That As of right now, no, we do not have anything committed for that line item for next, the next fiscal year that has been um, proposed or approved. Okay. Uh, may I ask, uh, Carmen, could could you uh, tell everyone what uh, we typically draw draw down from on this line? Yeah, so that's a great question. So typically in the past, what has been drawn down from this line item has been um, social district. So that is uh, something that comes out of that line item. Um, stickers, signage. Yeah, that is correct. Stickers, banners, signage, um, billboards. Anything to do with promotions and advertising for the downtown? We don't have much need for social district stuff if we can't get to downtown. <laughs> but we are rebranding the social district yeah. and re-signing it. So who did that? That didn't come out of this past fiscal year, did it? The, the it new? It has not as of right now. Okay. How much is that going to be? Do you know? For the social district rebranding, that you know, yet to be determined. Uh, especially since you know, with the expansion of the social district, you know, that's going to require more, more signage. Um, and then, of course, throughout the course of the year, we have cup stickers that are distributed to the local businesses that are part of the social district. So let's. So we've spent this year, fiscal year to date, sixteen hundred. So we still have. 3400 to spend this year? Correct. Okay. Okay. That's helpful. And, yeah. Well, I mean, if that's, I mean, if we're thinking about the timing of, mm -hmm. the, of the invoices coming in, and we don't think we can spend all of the money allotted for this year, a $500 bill against that would work. Unless you're thinking social district rebranding, which is a priority, is going to come in. I mean, we can kind of do that end of fiscal year timing thing. Um, so we have some flexibility if the board is interested in taking Either it way, we, we, if we do something today, we can use that money to do this, mm -hmm. and then you have all the 5000 for the new fiscal year. So either way, it works. So the proposed ask from, um, from Mark is 500 a month for four months. Right. So. What do you think, Deanna? I think it's a great idea. I think we need to um, keep our downtown open and spread the word. And uh, Sammy's doing an excellent job from the, still the CVB until it's not, whatever. <laughs> um, but from our tourism um, side of it, she's doing an excellent job working with um, the city and with MDOT 
one more avenue of getting that message out there is I, I'm all for it. Yeah, if we make if we if we agree to to support this today, then it falls right in this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. I guess technically it you know, would go to next year with it being taking place in July, but I would try to exhaust the funds from this year into the social district at thirty four hundred and then commit the two thousand for the next year for this technically. Okay. I also think with an endorsement from the DEA we could get some other individual business owners also on board, which is going to be important to yeah, I think I like what Mark said, the match. You know, yeah. if we're if we can commit and other business owners can commit four thousand then we get an eight thousand dollar run. I that's that's pretty generous on their behalf and I think substantial to getting the word out. This is just an observation, but if this were 10, 15 years ago, we would have had to hear from a lot of different radio stations, and there's just not as many anymore. So this is definitely a more of a focused uh, local um, station that I hear a lot in businesses. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a, my opinion is that it's a good media choice if we were gonna choose a, a station. So, Bill, you said if, if we don't, if we get a, like a, a statement now from them by the end of this month, it's better to hold this off to next month and, and then do the social stuff this month or in this fiscal year. So a lot of times with the fiscal years, where it should land is when it was actually the, the service was provided. Okay. All right. So no matter when the um, invoice came in. I would think it would be next year technically was when the services provided July through October. Okay. Sometimes we squeak away with Yeah, and there's different you know bringing it in this fiscal year even though we can't get it done next fiscal year. All right, that's either way it works. Any thoughts, Bruce? I yield to those with businesses. Okay. I, I think there's a there's a there's a risk. We've gotten tied to fiascos in the past, right? Uh, so if this is well handled, this is a way to mitigate uh, some of the bypass, the, uh, the bridge closure issues. Uh, but I'm playing, you know, this tape keeps playing in my head. The DDA screwed up the, the bridge closure. It was a mess. And you know, we're advertising a lot, on the air a lot, and people are grumbling a lot, a lot, a lot. So we need to be very careful about the messaging. But, you know, if, if you know, business owners, you know, find it useful, I'm all for it. Okay. Who would like to proceed, or would we like to proceed? I'd like to make a motion that the DDA um, makes a commitment of the $500 a month for four months um, for the purposes of announcing the bridge closure. I'll second. Okay. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you, Bill. Um, any further discussion? Uh, this is, I don't need a roll call for this, do I? Yeah. Money. No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, moving on to financials, now that we just spent some money. In the board packet, um, they run the unpaid bill report um, showing all of the um, payments that are needed to pay by the end of the month. Um, any further questions? All budgeted items? Yeah. Okay. I move to approve the main financials, including the paid expenses. Motion from Karen to approve. Support. Support from Bruce. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. I have a quick question. I don't want to go back to it, but I just have a quick follow through question. That's okay. Who will be then getting a hold of Mark Sandstead so that they can start working on this? So Staff. Staff. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, executive report. Mr. Miller. 
Okay, uh, good morning everyone. We'll keep this uh, brief for you. Um, the uh, monthly report uh, had some good details there. I just want to point out we're working with the Northern Hotel uh, developer on trying to get that moving. We've done some uh, work on that to um, uh, try to connect him with resources, a different construction company. So that's all playing out. Uh, he will be going to MEDC uh, to ask for assistance, and he will be filing for an, an OPRA with City Council. Uh, and we have a step and a process to go through there, so we need to get an application and go through that. Uh, it involves Bill and I meeting with them, uh, along with Ed Bradford, et cetera. But bottom line is we're moving that forward and trying to overcome the, the gap in construction costs. Um, the, um, uh, the other thing that's not on here that's recent will be in next month's report. Um, Stacy uh, from the Chamber has uh, been meeting with um, Laura and Randy Z, who have picked up the uh, Amor Sign Company site on Water Street. Um, they're moving forward there. Uh, there may be some assistance, uh, some applications for facade grant, et cetera, coming uh, to help uh, with that project and cleaning that up. Um, so. Uh, we'll anticipate that in the future, but uh, that's been recent developments. But the chamber is in, in touch, and we're uh, we're working with them on uh, on that project. So that was a purchase of that. They building? bought it. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, so the idea there is the realty real estate company will be in the front and the offices, and then the golf cart rental will be out of the back. Uh, we'll uh, we'll have some more work, but they're uh, they're making uh, making progress. Uh, and then, um, you know, I, overall, uh, restaurants are moving forward. Uh, we'll see a couple uh, openings this summer, um, in addition to what's already been opened um, for food and candy. Um, but we will uh, we'll see some exciting new things this summer. But for the most part, construction is kind of lagging behind and the ambitious um, get it open before the summer or get it open before July 1st is starting to slip away, but um, uh, we'll see some some movement in the summer. So by the end of the summer, they'll be able to take advantage of the of, of what we had, uh, and then also things like that. Chris good, good Mark. I, I just think that people who don't own businesses down here don't understand the importance of that uh, space, which means you know each table is a revenue. So. You know, compared to I want to shop down here and park. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's generating revenue for people and keeps them here. It adds to the ambiance as well. Yes, that's right. It's really nice. Um, and just one more thing since, since you mentioned parking, Karen. I, um, I went through um, and walked downtown this past week to see if there's any other opportunities for signage. Um, this is in advance of the streetscape study coming out. But for parking, I'm just wondering if there might not be some other locations. So I'm going to continue to um, do that. I may reach out to the city to kind of talk through what needs to happen in that regard. But um, it is signed. I mean, there's signs out there. You go, go down River Street, you can see the parking signs and the arrows. But I think there, we could over-communicate, perhaps, uh, on a few instances. So we'll, we'll continue that discussion. I also, you, you, there was a presentation at the City Council for the Gateway Project, and the one thing that popped in my head um, off of, with uh, housing um, being located off a of division and off River Street at, at that end, um, we were going to do a um, traffic study, I thought. I, I would, it would be nice to know for sure that those parking, that parking garage and the entrance and exit will be located there so we can include that in, uh, depending on how close that uh, exit of the parking garage would be off a of division in the corner of division and first street. I mean, I just think that if we can keep with the group, um, maybe we can kind of have them study that a little bit too so that we're not going to cause more traffic backups. That's a great suggestion. Um, we were supposed to have a meeting between Little River Holdings and F and V uh, to talk about that, um, and generally not that specific, yeah. but general. Um, and I think we can. Um, we need to get back on F and V to get that scheduled. So, um, just it sounds like that's the 
a level of detail that the discussion needs to happen at. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of details. Yeah, it's, it was great, everything, but it's just when I was sitting there thinking, ooh, you know, Division yeah. Street and River, so. One last thing. Uh, we are continuing to have conversations with Little River Holdings on the Gateway Project. They did present on Tuesday at City Council. That means a lot of the information is now public. Um, but uh, we, uh, Kyle and I, and I, I think Bill, need to get together and have a meeting um, and, then, and then meet with Little River Holdings uh, because we are still, as authorized by you, looking forward to getting details and trying to come up with a plan to move forward on, on public parking and whether or not the DDA can give up some of this tip capture, what do we get for that, and then what, uh, how do we support the project because it will be transformational. So uh, that's still coming. I don't want to leave that off and suggest that nothing's happening, uh, but we will uh, continue to meet and then be able to come back and report to you. I do appreciate that they listened a little bit about, you know, just having, you know, empty parking, you know, empty spots, you know, they seeded and that, you know, I, I, I appreciate that they took that effort, you know, I know it was at a cost, but it's nice that they did that, and, you know, it'll be a little bit nicer while we're waiting for that project to... Will the fencing be coming down? I'm sorry? Will the fencing be coming down? There's this discussion at City Council on that, and, and um, uh, they're uh, looking for Eagle to give them a clear sign on the testing because um, some parts of the soil are contaminated and if the grass would grow and cover up the soil then then they probably that would be an indication so the dry up until yesterday the dryness hasn't helped <laughs> um, but I, I think that they're that's their plan to move forward and just they need to have that all clear because um, like most of the soils in the downtown, um, there will be some elements that need to be protected, right? So. And do you have any updates on goodies in Pinchot? I'm sorry? On goodies, do you have any updates? Um, at our business connection meeting, the last business connection meeting, um, it was revealed that uh, Millennial Decor is going to take over that space and do uh, a coffee house concept. And um, and so that's uh, that's it. I don't know of a timeline yet. And Deanna, do you have any information? I don't. Okay. No, just the same information that they revealed. Yeah. So the space has been spoken for, but um, like other construction timelines, I'm sure. If you if you walk by this week, uh, they have paper in the windows to kind of conceal what's going on. So I think there's probably progress, but um, but I I can't tell for sure. They have chosen a name for it. It would be called trophies. Thank you, Mark. Any questions for Mark? Any more questions? Okay, moving on to reports from our ad hoc committee's uh, streetscape plan. I'll, 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 I'll jump in. And, um, so we have had our regular meetings with um, uh, with F and B uh, and. Uh, they're, they are making progress um, because of the uh, well-timed and well-placed story in the paper about two-way traffic uh, generated a lot of social media interest um, that was going on at the same time as the um, as the survey for the streetscape plan so chamber staff directed uh, people on Facebook to take this survey uh, it was reported back that we had a very large and healthy response rate of 359 individuals. Um, so uh, that, uh, there's no such thing as bad press. Um, <laughs> but um, I think that it gave us an opportunity for a robust discussion. And so uh, they're still sifting through the data on that survey and since it was large enough, uh, we hope to see that soon and have a preliminary report. Um, we also are working towards some July uh, draft reports and discussions. So there'll be another round of meetings, hopefully in July. We'll let them sift through the data and make sure that they can get it done in time and then start to do the next public engagement dates. Um, also, the traffic counters uh, should be coming out uh, soon. So uh, you might see people working um, on, um, on the traffic um, 
study. They wanted to make sure that they got counts before the lane closures and the bridge closures. So they're working through that and they're in touch with the construction company. Um, so that's uh, kind of the update from F and V. Bill, did I miss anything or you have anything to add? Um, just I'd like to give an update. I think tied in with this is the, the Riverwalk grant. Um, we've hit some, you know, I think our our engineer working on that is really fixated on the ramp three um, um, issue. Um, that's after. next to I, Yeah, I should say that's the switchback over by um, by the barber shop. So I think we're looking at kind of different options there. I think it was a um, structural repair was kind of called for there. I think there's kind of a how much work needs to be done there. Um, there's kind of a between the preliminary engineering report that Spicer did and now this engineer, they requested, I think, an additional 39,000. Um, they're already getting, you know, 127,000, 30,000 that is inspection. The original, you know, budget from Spicer was 60,000 for engineering, 60,000 for inspection. So to justify a 40% increase, and then they're saying the repair there is substantially more. I've been trying to work through this issue with them. I think at this point I'm looking to pull that particular scope away from them. Um, the grant can't cover it, and I'm going to have to I'm gonna talk to council about it, but it would be, I think, for what they're proposing, and I don't, I think their job is to come up with a solution, not to tell me we need to spend $40,000 or do a million dollar repair. I don't think it's a successful project if I'm spending all the money on ramp three or, you know, that, that particular switchback. There's big project behind there that's a big part of the project that at least we want 240000 spent on this area. So I'm kind of reevaluating this engineer's involvement at this point. Um, but I think the, the phrase out of scope has come up uh, a little too often. <laughs> so I've just, um, just wanted to give you guys an update on that. I think I was hopeful that it would move along quicker. I I've, I've, um, also updated the EDA on this. So, um, and yeah, so just more to come on that, I think, while we work through this issue. But. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Um, anything on Streetscape, anybody? Okay. Good. Yes. Just briefly, I uh, found myself in Midland, uh, Michigan. Have, have you been there? Y yeah, but, yeah. There's a, there's a, a doubt uh, invest a lot of money there because they've got a, you know, a, a huge uh, capital investment in the area, uh, and they've they've got sort of a uh, a recreation uh, attraction, uh, a tridge, three, a bridge over three rivers that meets in the you know dead in the middle. Beautiful area, very well done, and the streetscape right around the hotels and the, the restaurants there uh, is two-way traffic. And, uh, and it was done very well. And I withdraw every objection that I have ever had to two-way traffic. Uh, the notable thing that was happening was nobody was using that downtown area to get from one place to another. That area was their destination. They were not fighting cars, trying to, and there was a stoplight at every corner. Right? Stoplight, stop sign? Stop, stop sign at okay. every corner. Four, four and, way stop at every corner. Okay. And no one seemed to have a problem with that because they wanted to park and get out and walk around, you know, to the fire pits and the, you know, all of the really cool stuff and the sidewalk that doesn't have any curves, you know, where the where you park is marked, you know. It's, it was lovely, very, very nicely done. But the remarkable thing about it was there were no fights between people and cars, right? Everybody was coming there to get out and enjoy the downtown. That's different than what we have in our area where people are getting from one place to another. They're using downtown to get from 31 to the beach. They're using downtown to get from, uh, you know, east to west. We need to get the tra that traffic off of River Street 
so that we can enjoy downtown. That's one of the obvious things, you know, in the comparison. To, you know, we want that Midland downtown. Uh, and uh, to get it, we're going to have to work hard on getting the traffic where it need, you know, getting trips where they want to go. If they want to see downtown, terrific, come downtown. And there, there's lots of places to park. It's easy, wonderful. Uh, so that was one observation. The second was uh, Chief Glass put uh, uh, speed, uh, you know, that speed display out there, you know, to let you know when you're speeding. Oh, by the fountain, sort yeah, of, right? By the fountain. Yeah. Uh, and I was shocked uh, to see the speed limit was 25. Downtown areas max should be 15. Is that correct? The speed limit is really 25? It is. I think so. Through all of downtown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So cars versus people. <laughs> uh, you know who's going to win. We should, look, we should look into it. And, and I could be completely wrong on this, but I heard at one time that the lowest legal posted limit is 25. That you can't. I've seen signs for 15. I have too, yeah. but I don't... I, so I I'm, I'm hope I'm wrong. The loops down at the beach are posted at 15. Are they? Okay. Right, All right. Right, right. All right. Yeah. How do we change that? Yeah. <laughs> so I have to talk to police chief and our engineer. I don't think we have any posted speed limit downtown. No, I haven't, I, I haven't seen it. I've seen. never seen it. Yeah, and I thought it was 15, but you know, over okay. the years it might have changed. And then when you get to the end here in this area and past the Hotel and our motel and stuff. That's all 25, because first street is 25. Sure. Let's look into that. Yeah. Yeah. Speeds yeah. were you noticing on the? I, I think probably between 31 and um, between Maple. I think people probably are going slower than 25. But what are you noticing on the display? When, the, we'll have actual the data. Just, on it, but right. The, you, yeah, you've got the data. Well, the day, the day they put that thing out there. Uh, the speed dropped in half. It was really lovely. Uh, but the, their, the average speed sort of changes by time of day. Sure. Uh, you know, around 5 o'clock where everybody is going home, uh, you know, they, they hit the gas right at the fountain. Uh, so that, you know, they're accelerating by the time, you know, they're past the park. Uh, and you know, it was averaging around 20, 23, 24 miles an hour. I could be wrong, but we got the data on it. I am. Um, I, that's my route home. I, there's two things I noticed. Is one, I've never had a problem with that yield area there, but this year there are people who will come. What, what's the back street? Yeah, the water. They, water. They just go down water and never yield. Right. Um, so that's kind of an interesting, and then being behind people where it was up to 30, you know, you hit, they're hitting their brakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the whole sort of uh, atmosphere around the, the traffic downtown uh, has always been cars win. I've seen kids standing at crosswalks, not where we got the signs, but standing at crosswalks at corners, waiting while cars whiz by. No, people win. Yeah. Stop for people. If they look like they want to cross the street, stop. Yeah. You know, we have to we have to work really hard on this to change the the dynamic and make downtown safe for pedestrians. Because I tell you. They're not, I know people, uh, my, my mother-in-law doesn't do anything downtown because she doesn't want to get hit by cars. Hmm. You're losing businesses, business from people who won't stop downtown because it's a circus. Appreciate your observations on the Midland too. Um, and some, I wonder sometimes if like mid, mid block crosswalks, you know, the, the crosswalk signs are really helpful and when they came down for the weekend for the Memorial Day Parade. It was immediate change. Yeah. And uh, My wife and I visit a town in a warmer climate quite often, and it's, uh, 
we have to change how we walk in this town because if you even approach a road, intersection or not, stop, cars will stop. And it, we're not used to that. And um, so it takes a few days. Well, people from other, you know, people from other places, particularly anybody on the East Coast is going to come here and fear for their lives. Okay. They're not going to get out of their cars when they see, you know, people standing and watching, you know, cars whiz by or, or, you know, uh, uh, RVs, mm -hmm. uh, not stopping for them. I mean, you know, we need to be friendly to people who want to be out walking downtown. Or riding bikes. Uh, I have one other comment. Please. The, the, the uh, uh, block party, mm -hmm. uh, at TJ's block party was a great friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Wonderful. We should be doing more of that stuff. That's, I'm looking forward to that. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Bruce. I did want to throw out an observation really quick also about the, the it is so true that <clears throat> if the posted speed limit is twenty five, people are gonna do thirty, right? It's summertime, you got the boom boxes going or the radio going loud. The distractions downtown because of all the changes. So even though the crosswalk signs are there, which huge difference between when they are there and when they're not there is true. But if you look at people coming downtown, they're observing the Rams or the um, Vogue Theater. What's on at the Vogue Theater? Oh my gosh, there's a new ice cream shop downtown. Look at the beautiful um, New to You building. They're looking at all of the great changes downtown. They're not paying attention to crosswalks and speed. So that all, um, you know, that that just adds to the whole. People are distracted, and something's going to happen. So. I'm all for the lowering the speed limit and just making awareness that our downtown is a lot of foot traffic, a lot of pedestrians, and we need to make them safe, and keep them want safe. More foot traffic and more pedestrians and more people sitting, you know, and seating outside. That's what we want. Right, without incident. Okay. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Moves on to uh, facade grants. So an update here is that on May 18th, I signed a letter of intent with MADC for the facade restoration initiative. We spoke about that at the last meeting. Um, I am waiting to see what my next steps are, uh, background check and the other things we need to do with MADC. Uh, so um, I, I followed up on that yesterday and they said that will be coming shortly. So we hopefully will be able to get some details on when the money will show up, how much money is showing up, and, uh, and then that, that helps us back into some other decisions. What staff will do uh, with, um, uh, with, this, with, these, with this information is that we've asked for our five projects with that grant application to rebid and give us some new quotes. We'll figure out how much money that's going to take uh, back into that, and we should have money left over with our new budget line of um, that we might be able to do uh, a grant application and go out for open bids for new applications. So uh, we have to get that uh, figured out, and as soon as we're able to do that, we want to put out the applications so that uh, businesses can take advantage of what's left of the construction season. Um, so we already heard from, um, from Randy Z and Laura on Water Street, right? The outsiders looking for facade grants. So there's some other businesses that might be interested. So it would be great if we can get that uh, put into play once we figure out how much we have. So I'll keep you all posted. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Kelly. There's a lot happening right now for beautification. Uh, the volunteer gardeners have been busy beautifying all of their gardens, the tree garden, art park, uh, butterfly garden. Um, there's new Adirondack chairs thanks to the DDA um, and table umbrellas um, thanks to Father Credit Union that were installed in the art park. Um, Veterans Park and JC Banshell, I think I already said, has been clean painted and the flowers have been donated and placed. Um, the parking lot next to Dick's Barber has been weeded, pruned, and cleaned. We do want to go back and power wash the curbing and the sidewalks. Um, the gas grill that was donated by Ed Chris Goods has been um, placed on the patio at the marina. Uh, the Adirondack chairs and pub tables from the Comfort Center have been also placed on the patio. Um, we have two more pub chairs with an accent table 
that is being donated from the Comfort Center that will be uh, on the patio soon. Uh, the flowers have been purchased and placed uh, at the marina, at the entrance, um, the River Street uh, entrance, the river entrance, and on the patio. And the, the, there's a triangle medians on uh, Clay Street in a public parking lot that one of our gardeners um, cleaned and weeded and placed native plants uh, to Michigan in those areas. And the painting has finally begun in the marina. Um, they're telling us three days. We don't know how things go. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing probably three to five to, to Did you get your coastal? finish it. Pardon? Did you get coastal? Yes. Well, the, the paint colors are coastal, but the rest I, I had to appease um, a few people at the marina, so it's going to be transitional. Um, and also, I asked, um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the company called Shine of Traverse City. They install, yes? Mm -hmm. They install lights and trees, and they came down this week and gave me a quote to put lights in the area where the uh, public bathrooms are next to Goody's. So they would light up the, ar the architectural structure, and then there's a tree in the back. Um, we looked at some other areas by Dick's Barber and by Bluefish, but there wasn't enough electrical capacity for what they needed to do. Um, and then we ended up going to the tree garden and lighting two trees and the fence, and then the butterfly garden, same thing, and then some trees in the marina and the fencing in there. Um, he gave me a quote of $6,860. That would be for the cost of the supplies, the labor to put them in the trees, and then maintenance for one year. Um, they uh, would want 50% down, which would be um, 3,000, what was it? 3,430 dollar deposit. And my thought was, um, now that we were talking about that earlier, could we take, well first of all, I'm getting ahead of myself, I would like to make a proposal to add another uh, level of beauty and interest to our downtown with lights by giving Shine a trial run for a year um, for the 6860 expense from the DDA design projects line item. And was wondering if 3,430 of that could be taken from our budget this year where there's 4,000 some left over. And then um, they said that they could start um, implementing the lights in July, early July. And they would need the other 3,430 and whether or not that could come out of the next fiscal year's budget under DDA design projects. Kelly, um, the, the 6860 um, what is what would it be of the following year? Well, this is kind of a trial run for us, so um, it would be comparable if we if we kept everything we wanted. But there were so many other areas that we were talking about that we wanted to do that I would have to talk to the city of USD to see if we could get some electrical, some better options um, for electricity. We also talked about um, the um, solar for the art park where there absolutely is no electricity. He said that he has had not has not had good luck with solar. Okay. Um, it's not, it, it doesn't, it's not very dependable. So is this a $6,800 a year? Mm -hmm. Well, no, the, because part of that is um, supplies. Right, so that my question is the following, if we, if we were, less. okay, would it be half or, I mean, is it? He couldn't, he couldn't say. Um, you know, if we had more gardens we wanted to do, there would be the cost of supplies again, but if we kept what we had, it would just be maintenance. Okay. It'd be nice to know, you know, so if we're paying for an asset and a service, the following year, if we st still hold that asset, what is the service? You know, is it half? Is it a quarter? Um, just so we have, we know everything and we're looking beyond a one year. Right. The the service total was thirty four ninety. Okay. For this first year. Okay. 
So we can assume that the and following, the, sorry, go ahead. And the retail would be 3370. Which is the asset, the lights themselves, yes. the equipment. Okay. Right. Yep. They would take care of everything. However, the city, I don't know how we would work out the cost of the electric. He did say that um, they service many communities and nobody has ever come back and said, you've got to take them out there, the electricity is through the roof. He said it's, it's nominal. Oh, it's LED, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, have we talked to um, DW about are they in this, walking through this too? No. Okay. I spoke with Kyle. So I think it would be helpful to have like the invoice, I know, you know, I think last month we, you know, approved the paint, the chairs, and it's all been great. I think there was a lot of confusion about the scope of the painting. Um, I think you were asking Jeff to pay for it when it was a DDA expense, which is, I just think we need, I think invoices that we consider should be submitted to um, a mark before the meeting so we can all look at it and there's no confusion later on it's, if we're going to okay. pursue something. Shine could not get to us prior to the day before yesterday. Um, and I, I never asked Jeff to pay for the painting. I always knew it was coming on the DDA. Okay, that's all right. I've been I, in constant contact with Carmen. Okay. Um, so we can discuss this, uh, but um, I, I don't, I think that we should um, have the proposal in writing from them before we approve it. Um, are they wanting to install in June or July? July. Okay. But we would, you know, if we're interested, I would like to get on the books. Sure. I, do, I do have the proposal that I can, I can email everybody. Okay. I got it last night. Okay. Any questions or thoughts? So, so let me know if I'm thinking about this the right way. So that the, the proposal is for a year-long experiment with this. Mm -hmm. Part of it to be funded with this fiscal year and part of it to be funded with next fiscal year. That was my thought. Uh, and uh, part of that experiment is, you know, kind of a sunk cost of $3,300 for, which, which we would own if we, even if we decided not to do this. Right. And the, uh, the issue of whose plugs we're plugging this into was not addressed by, by this firm, that's something to be worked out, right? We do have to speak to Jeff, the city man, Steve, yes. Um, does the service contract cover vandalism? No. Okay. Um, Especially over there by the I, I like the idea of this. I like going to cities that have trees lit up. Mm -hmm. I would like to um, have a meeting with the DPW, mm -hmm. so we're all on the same page, if we decide to proceed, or maybe we have it before we decide to proceed. Um, just my thought on this. Um, is, there, is, is there a way for us to grant the authority to go forward and to the outcome of this meeting? There's just a lot of variables that I don't know that, where are they plugging in? I mean, there's just things that we'd have to know. I think I feel more comfortable seeing the proposal, sitting down with them figure out where they're going to plug in, are we going to own the asset? I mean, that's kind of that's some basic questions before I think the board should um, approve funds for something like this. It's an exciting project, but we there's did, just a lot of questions. We did yeah. locate all of the electrical outlets. We just need to make sure that they are in working order and yeah. that they do have an eye sense. And, and just, just to provide some, I think, and I appreciate Kelly's enthusiasm, uh, the grills and the bikes, which I didn't see, like the gas grill, which was donated, are insurance company said that was a risk for the city we had to kind of work through a process where it's inspected every time so a lot of these are great ideas but there's a lot of questions that then I'm asked later and can we justify certain things and it does come down to where are we stringing these up are they you know is there going to interfere with anything I just don't know and having had to deal through this bike and grill issue which I think it's a nice asset but um, if the city's going to be liable for a you know, the lawsuit for things. I just have to make sure that I'm not putting us in a bad situation. I, I also, I love, like, downtown Traverse City with all the lights and stuff and the trees. And I, I, and I think that that's a good, um, you know, accent to any area. But I also, you know, want to, again, 
again to say just what Bill's saying is as an asset. And I've been on this um, board long enough to know how um, good ideas and assets really have to be coordinated with BBW because there are many things they've assumed over the years that um, weren't planned. You know, we bought them as a, as a DBA, they're installed, and then, you know, somebody has to pick it up after a while. So I think that, um, you know, we could, we could, if you're going to be involved, um, we could give our um, authority to you to meet with, you know, um, the unification team, the Jeff and Bill, and then if you believe that, you know, it's all covered, then you could make a okay. And so we could do a, a motion. And like I said, I just got, I just met with them, and I just got the proposal, yeah. and Jeff was in, at work yesterday, so. Yeah. Let's let's not push this through. Let's think it through and meet with the city. And um, in terms of budget, you know, budgets can be amended and and we can shift stuff around. That's um, so I I'm comfortable meeting uh, and making sure that we uh, so it's successful. So thank you. It's exciting. Anything else? That's it. Okay. I, I do want to thank the city of Nancy um, for all the help with the equipment and the supplies that they've been giving us to beautify with the yeah. Looks great. Yeah. All, this, all the projects look great. Yeah. Okay, moving on to uh, district business. Anything, Deanna? It's summertime. <laughs> downtown Manistee. See a lot of cone liquors around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little cold still. <laughs> Sorry about the. <laughs> Ice cream on the sidewalks. We are taking a um, proactive approach to that. We're, we've got a power washer. We'll be like power washing in the front end. But um, <laughs> my dogs think it's wonderful. Yeah. See, see, dogs do love it. They do. Um, so I guess the only thing I really have to report um, always on the parking thing. Um, I had a really great conversation with uh, Chief Glass, and. He's, they're really interested in the downtown parking and being a partner and doing whatever they can do to help with the offenders. They want to do a study, but the study is really misconstrued. It's not going to be a true study if people are parking downtown long term. Residents, um, employees, business owners, etc. So I guess just you know, the broken record reminds people of the two-hour downtown that we're really reserving those spots for guests, visitors, people that want to um, shop our downtown. So, and then uh, Josh Glass and his team, of course, are, are continuing to monitor it the best that they can. But they also have a lot of other, if they're downtown talking about, or, you know, ticketing or warning people about parking for two hours, they're not doing something else. So, you know, just again, that reminder of downtown parking. But it's summertime downtown Manistee. It's beautiful. The flowers are beautiful. People are happy. They're walking around. I really feel like with the bridge closure, I, I don't know that we're going to see that big of an effect. People, um, downtown Manistee is becoming a destination. What do we do to keep that happening and traffic flow better? That's all that all lays on our shoulders and more discussions about all that. Um, we're just really fortunate to have the downtown that we have and here we are, downtown Manistee, summertime. Thanks for about your enthusiasm. Thank you. Yes, I have to run some keys to Dose. Okay. Right um, yeah. Old business. We need to amend the budget. Let me just um, uh, give an update on why we have this item. Um, so uh, Carmen and I are, are, are looking to make sure that we do everything correctly and that we make sure we're covered when it comes time for an audit, make sure we get another clean audit. We like having those. Um, so um, when you all approved the uh, new contract for uh, economic development, that include, included an increase which was not accounted for in the fiscal year 23 budget. Uh, so there's a slight increase because this was approved in the middle of the year. Um, they're about $2,500 over. 
uh, for the for the line item, and we're asking for you to um, amend the budget for that line item uh, so that we can um, show the auditors that you both approved the contract and the budget item and made sure everything was uh, was clean and clear. Uh, this is a, another way for you to uh, control the, uh, the fiscal uh, the fiscal keys here, and we just ask that you uh, consider this motion and approve so we can uh, make sure everything is clean on our audits and our books. Um, I'll make the motion uh, to, uh, to amend the fiscal year 2023 budget to increase the economic development contract fees line to 17500 and increase up uh, $2,500 to account for the approved increase in the economic development contract. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Karen. Mm -hmm. Just uh, some comments. I had, um, I see our, our budget, 65000 for the city's enhanced service agreement. We, I think it's technically would be 71000 with a 3% increase, which I just wanted to make a point that typically with, an, I think my rules of thumb are you have an agreement, you honor an agreement, obviously you have your outs with things. Um, I, I'm going to talk to Kyle about it. But I think also as a board, um, when there's an increase, and it sounds like we already passed this, we did pass this, but it should be justified about why is there an increase, especially if I'm going to defend an existing agreement. I expect any increase should be justified with why it's needed, um, and is there an, another service provided, or just we need um, okay. justification, I think, just as a board to uh, make it a good decision. So. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any other comments? Yeah. Please. Deanna Marsh. Approved. Kevin Green. Yes. Kevin Gamble. Yes. Sue Allen. Yes. Karen Goodman. Yes. Kaya Mosley. Yes. Thank you all. Um. Social district. Um, so a couple uh, we're working with Carmen. And this, uh, this. I'll keep one. Okay. I don't, know if oh, that's enough. Okay. I don't know if we have enough. For it. Okay. Go ahead, Mark. Mark, is there a need for it over here? Whatever should we do it now? Yeah. Maybe 2025. Okay. All right. So a couple. Does everyone have a map? Yep. So in discussions with Carmen and um, you know, I talked to the. We had our last our last iteration of this went west to Cross Street. We had the crossing of the River Walk over you know to go over 31. We wanted to make sure we include Third Life Brewing, also Milwaukee House and Scoobies in the future. Uh, the new addition with this um, is going south to the Ramsdale. They have kind of a theater license, which potentially you know, could be used as well for an event or for a social district during one of their events. And then the other thing, we're doing some pedestrian crossing enhancements at First and Maple. This also grabs Chippewa Auto, which they were going to do some cocktails to go. They don't have a liquor license. I don't know when and if they will have one, but... I think going up to the Ramsdale, we might as well grab that as well uh, for the future. So, okay. So this is a proposal that um, we should t probably take to council if, if everybody agrees on these boundaries. So, the, and the big thing, the change with this one is extending itself to the Ramsdale. And, yeah. Okay. Was it two spruce um, always, or was that just a clear? It was always to spruce, correct? Uh, was it? Okay. Was it? Did it include Spruce Street before, or up, up to Spruce Street? I don't think it did, because we didn't have a restaurant Actually, at the time. Actually, the, the old boundary went to Pine. Oh, okay. We now brought it up to Spruce Street to include oh, good the okay. And the, the fountain area, in case there was any future event in that portion of that street. Okay. Good catch, Kelly. Hi. My apologies on that. 
So is everybody satisfied with these boundaries? Question: What's the what's the rules crossing the highway? So we're it's supposed as part of the law. It says we're supposed to create a safe environment. So my that's the reason we're making it pedestrian crossing at uh, the river walk. So if someone has a drink, they should cross there. Mm -hmm. We don't under, want under, people under the bridge. Under right. yeah. So we don't want people crossing 31 with a drink, and we prefer. Yeah, so that's the whole reason for that. We just want to keep it as safe as possible okay. and not encourage. And there would be proposed signage. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's my concern, is that if, even if one person gets killed crossing that with a drink in their hand, it's not worth expanding we, over to that side. But if it's enforceable somehow or very strongly suggested that they go under the bridge. I think we talked about signage. There's where the crossing, where you'd go down for the bridge, would probably be if you intend to cross, finish your drink or use the river walk to go east across 31 okay. so and we've been working with um, the CVB as well and Carmen on signage so that is certainly been discussed how to best sign that yeah. okay um, so if everybody agrees on this I think it would be important that we have um, a motion for um, our approval of this to our support for this to send to council. I would certainly think that we should offer our support to expand the social district as proposed. Is that a motion? That is a motion. Okay. I'll second. Okay, thanks, Kelly. You got that, Carmen? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thanks, Bill. Uh, where are we at? Uh, DDA partnership with Eagle 101. Oh, sorry. Done. Any, Any other business? I don't think we already covered the amendments to the agenda, I think, at the beginning of the meeting. Um, okay. I guess for public comment. I want to take and ask, um, I get a lot of complaints, even though everybody likes the cutout under the tree. I, the, the what? The eating places out in the oh, roadway. Okay. I know it's been discussed about putting more down there. Uh, I think you guys got to explain more to the public why we need more and why we have what we well, have. Well, I, I think of... I think a restaurant would have to make a request. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, somebody's got to do something because I've heard a lot of complaints. You know, people are waiting for the cars to come up on top of their things. I've heard a lot of complaints on that. Sure, but I think <laughs> we we would have to have a request from a restaurant. Yeah, you know? I, I just wanted to bring that up to you. Okay. So you know, Thank you. Um, the 15 mile an hour speed limit has always been called an illegal speed. Limit. That's why it never was enforced at First Street Beach. Uh, I don't know. Can we you change it just for downtown build as a, where the state accepts that, or because it is an illegal speed? Yeah, I'd have to look at. It. I was under the impression that Cal was that it was 25 the minimum. Yeah. I see in you know condo areas where it's 15 or some. So yeah, that's why we've never rolled tickets for 15. Okay. So that, that'd be one thing you have to check up on. Um, have you ever considered some type of fencing along the river here? I mean, I've seen kids come up to that thing and almost go into the river. Has anybody ever thought about putting something in there? It's hard when it's a marina. Right. I agree with that. I have been, I've seen, I've been concerned too. It's like, wow, it could be easily somebody fall off. Yeah. You know, but you're exactly right. We have boats that are um, yeah. rowing up there. You know, if you're even opening or something, but I mean, I've seen kids just dive into things. It's an idea. I'm just bringing it up for you. Also, does our insurance cover going under the bridge or if somebody does happen to walk out with their the bridge? What does our insurance say about that? I can check with them. So, we have an idea when you pass these things up, you know, where we stand with that. Thank you, Councilman Grabowski. Appreciate you coming. Um, no more public comment? Board member comment? I, I just want to uh, uh, 
took um, Mark's thing in the paper, did kind of give that information no. about the, the importance of having those um, right. outside eating areas. I, I do understand when people get frustrated with it, but as a previous owner, and I'm sure current owners, you know, it's like having that extra revenue, you know, secure my place on River Street. So um, it may be an inconvenience to people who are visiting down there, but it certainly is a benefit to those who own property. I just wanted to bring it up, so. Yeah, yeah, so it's a good discussion. And there's one other thing that, that wasn't covered in the letter is that when a business comes in with an application to put in outdoor dining, they do have to buy the, their own outdoor dining platform. And that's, at least a couple years ago, was a $10,000 investment. Now, one, they got to make the money back to pay that off, but, and they will, and they have. But two, that's a high bar. You, you, I don't think that every, I, there have been businesses who have considered that, and said, ah, not right now, I can't afford the ten, the ten thousand dollar investment. So I think that 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 it's not going to be proliferating wildly through downtown with every new restaurant, but I think it will be something that's offered to them and and you know, we, we certainly want to encourage them if they'll if they'll invest in that kind of space. How much do they pay for a parking space so for that? All downtown parking is, is all public downtown parking right. is free, parking lots included. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so I think we do have, um, for people when they're doing construction, they have to pay a certain amount. Um, yeah. So that was kind of the discussion is, you know, do we make a restaurant pay for a certain amount? We do, I think we do have an initial fee and then a... Mm -hmm. A per month for year for the season, so we yeah, might yeah. have to. We could discuss increasing yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have uh, city council appointed uh, two new board members that will be starting next month. Um, one of those seats replaces uh, Tamara, and um, she's not here today, but um, she served I think three, three terms full. She was here before. Yeah. Okay. So. This is just uh, officially to thank her, and um, she was a wonderful asset to the board. So um, we'll do that in person as well. Um, anything else on? Okay. Anybody else? I just uh, same with Tamara. I worked her, and she did great. I mean, the events and stuff. But she really helped uh, Dean and and the other business people kind of lost our leadership. And, uh, she took on some of the financial stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. And just one thing to note or keep in mind is that she was technically our um, treasurer, um, so we'll be reappointing board seats as well. So keep that in mind. Secretary and treasurer are open. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Bill. I'll second. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>